Hello there, welcome to our Friday demo. Uh, I'm Brad, as you probably know, but welcome. I hope you had a great week and uh, hopefully we'll have a, a fun, uh, great painting tonight in our demo. I'm gonna be doing a cloud pour tonight, just a simple cloud pour. Um, so nothing super fancy. I've got a few colors mixed up and uh, I'll show them to you in a second. And um, it's a pretty monochromatic color scheme, nothing uh, really wild or crazy. I'm hoping for uh, a lot of contrast with this particular painting. And uh, I've got like a white cloud mix and I've got some really darks. I've got a couple of blues and a gold. And uh, I'll talk about the colors in a second. Um, welcome everybody who is joining us. Lily is here. Hey, Lily and hey, Tracy. And hey, Susan, how's it going? We've got like some flickering I'm noticing going on. Uh, hopefully that'll clear up. I'm not sure what that is. Probably some internet stuff or something. But uh, uh, hopefully it'll it'll go away. So um, anyway, I'm going to be working on a 14 by 18 uh, panel. One of my panels that I make. Um, it's all prepped and ready to go. Here it is. And I've got the back taped off. And I've got my little hooks in there and everything's nice and level. And uh, that's a really important step, um, especially with a panel like this, something when you're pouring on stuff that's really smooth, um, if it's not really level, it will want to roll off the edges. So I like to level it. I have a, um, I talk about this several times before, but it's always a good, good to, uh, you know, review stuff. So here's my big level. This is a really inexpensive level that I got at uh, Home Depot, I think. It's very lightweight, which I like a lot. And so I set it on the front. I like a bigger level, especially with larger paintings or larger canvases. A larger level really comes in handy. Um, it gives you a much more accurate uh, accurate reading. So I, measure, I look at the back of the canvas and the front of the canvas looking pretty level. I had to adjust it a little bit. And then I checked the sides. And again, it's pretty darn level. And uh, if, for instance, you have to adjust, let's say your cup hooks, which is what I normally use, and some are a little shorter than others, um, you want to be able to uh, make a note. And so you know which way is level on your table. So what I like to do is, uh, if I if I have to level it and adjust anything, I put a little piece of tape with a little F on it, and the F stands for front, so I know that it's facing me or facing. So just so I know after I tilt and turn the panel or the canvas around, I know I can kind of peek under there and I know I've got it back in the right spot. So that's important too, especially if uh, you're adjusting or your, ta your table is not really level because um, you don't want to put it the wrong way because you're going to be really out of level then, and that could be disastrous. So got all my, uh, everything's level and ready to go. Paints are all mixed up. Uh, for a 14 by 18, that's what we're going to do uh, tonight. Uh, and this is a basically a straight pour that I'm going to be doing. A, a cloud pour is, you know, I'm using the straight pour technique um, or slight ring pour technique. I need eight ounces of paint. Uh, so I've got my cup and I've got it marked for eight ounces. So I know how much paint I have to put in my cup and uh, we're ready to go. And then I'll put my little base coat on and then we'll pour and then tilt away and see what happens. So uh, welcome Kathy and uh, CJ is here and uh, McLovin is here. Awesome. So uh, we can proceed. Um, before I get, uh, let me move my level out of the way really quick. So anyway, so let's uh, take a look at the colors I'm going to be using. I'm going to flip over here. And so here's my panel. Um, and so here are the colors. It's a very kind of monochromatic palette, like I mentioned. Um, here's my cloud mixture right here. I'm just, I'm using uh, my easy cloud mix, which is uh, two parts flow trawl, one part of the bare satin enamel paints, one part of uh, Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. I put a little bit of uh, color in here. So there's a tiny bit of uh, blue and a tiny bit of green. 
it's very, very subtle. So it's an off white, um, <clears throat> but I didn't want a stark white. So that's my cloud mixture. I've got, uh, this is like a blue gray. It's a color by Liquitex that I like a lot. It's a really pretty color, kind of a, you know, a little more understated, um, which is a something I love to do. This is a mixture of some black and some Payne's gray. I've got some more here. Um, I kind of mixed together a few different leftover paints I had um, and uh, just kind of poured them between each other. Uh, so, and this is just extra in case I need more for a base coat. So it's a really dark, basically black, a little bit of blue in there. Uh, and then this is a gold. I mix this up. This is gold and I've, I've neutralized it a little bit. So I've kind of grayed it out and gold is basically yellow. And uh, if you want to get a more neutralized gold, you can add the complement to yellow, which is purple. And so I added just a little bit of uh, purple gray to the gold and it gave it a really beautiful kind of uh, muted, dulled uh, look. Um, so it's not so bright and so super yellow um, because all my other colors are pretty uh, neutralized. I wanted to neutralize my, my gold as well. So um, that's a great way to do it. Uh, any of your colors, you can take the complement color, which is the color right across uh, on the color wheel. So if this is a yellow, purple is the complement. Um, and gold is basically yellow. So a little bit of purple and you'll neutralize it. And not a lot of purple, but just a little small amount. So that is the story with the gold. And then last but not least, this is some leftover paints I had uh, from a pour I did earlier in the week. And there is some of this color in it. There's also some cloud mixture in it. And I also, I always, um, you might not be able, you probably won't be able to see this, but I've labeled my cup. Uh, I, I always label it if there's cloud mixture in there. So I know uh, that it's gonna have a reaction, like a cloud reaction. So I just write cloud mix in here. So uh, I'll use this probably sparingly because I don't wanna overwhelm my original cloud mix, but it's a really nice, pretty color that has a lot of these colors in it. So I thought I'd use it sparingly and that's pretty much it. So well, my goal for this painting is I want to get a lot of contrast, especially with the cloud. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to pour my cloud mixture in first, and then I'm going to pour in the darkest color I have right after that. So I have the lightest color and the darkest color right next to each other. Um, I don't do that very often, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen with the cloud mix, but we'll find out in a second. So let's go ahead and uh, layer our cup. and. Uh, and we'll, that will be our first step. So I'm going to move that aside. I've got my cup right here. I've got, it's again labeled for eight ounces, which is what I need for this particular size. So I'm going to pour in, let me move this actually out of the way. <clears throat> it might be a little easier to see how much paint I put in <laughs> when it's not on a white uh, panel. So here is my cloud mix. And I'm going to just put a small amount in. A smallish amount. I might put one more layer of this, but that's probably about it. And then I'm going to put in the darkest color, just a smallish amount of that. So we have our lightest and darkest right next to each other. I'm going to put in the gold on top of that black color. Uh, again, this is a much lighter color now. And then the blue on top of the gold. And then I'll probably go back to the black again and pour a little bit more of that. And then a, just a touch of our uh, kind of leftover grayish blue color. And that's looking pretty good. I might go back to some more gold. I definitely want the gold to show up in the painting. Maybe a little more of the purple. And then again, for more contrast, I'm going to put more black in and then just a little bit more of our uh, cloud mix. Just a little bit. And then that's it for the cloud mix. That's all I'm going to use. Um, I don't want to overwhelm the painting. And then after that, I'll probably go, I'll go to the purple again, the, or the grayish blue, and then Here's some gold, and then maybe on top of the gold, a little more of the kind of that other 
you know, kind of cloud mixtures. And then almost to the, my line, and then I'm gonna fill the black up to the, up to my line. So there we go, that's our, our layered cup ready to go. And I'm gonna put that aside for the moment and put my other colors over here. And then I'm gonna spread out my base coat. And uh, I'll use the rest of this and then I have some more of that of black. I'm just gonna use the black for my base coat. And, or maybe I'll, mm, maybe I will throw in a little bit of our blue as well. I'll spread it around and kind of mix them together. That might be kind of fun. So that will, that's in our cup, so it'll be uh, in our painting. And I'll move those aside. And then I need some more of our black. So I'll just spread a little more of that. And that should be good. Let's uh, just spread it around. And we'll get kind of an interesting color. It'll, it's fun to have these kind of, you know, multicolored base coats. Um, spread them around with your palette knife. I like that. I might need a little more paint. And again, this is fairly thin. I'm not, I don't want a, a flood coat on here, just a thin coat to help the paint kind of slide around. And here we go, and I'll move it. I've got some paint over here, I'll move it over here to finish up. Ooh. Sorry for the scraping. So that's what happens with panels. I should get a, uh, um, a silicone putty knife or a palette knife. That might help. So there we go, I think we're just about done. And I, I do have a few bubbles. I'll maybe pop them, pop a few bubbles with the torch first. But I like the way that looks. And uh, set that down. All right. So let me grab my uh, torch here. And I'll just pop a couple bubbles. That's pretty much all I use the torch for is for uh, bubble popping. Here we go. That looks pretty good to me. And so now it's time to uh, pour our cup. And I have one final decision to make before I pour it out. And I've talked about this a lot, which, uh, you know, which side of the cup to pour out of. Um, this is the side I layered all my paints in. Uh, and they're all floating layers because this is a, you know, straight pour slash ring pour. Um, this is the opposite side. I, I like to pour out of the opposite side quite a bit. So I think I'm going to try that side uh, tonight and we'll see what happens. So let's, oh, let me f uh, flip the camera so you can kind of get a better view and uh, you won't be looking through the cup. So here we go. And let's start pouring. So just a nice kind of thin stream is what I like for a straight pour. And you can vary it if you want the height of your cup. So here it's a little lower. The higher you go, you get a little more blending of the colors. You can turn it slightly. Turning it kind of back. The turning it will affect the design. And I'm getting a really kind of thick ribbon right now coming out of the cup. I want to kind of thin that out 
and maybe slow down the stream a little bit. I'm getting towards the end now. And here comes the cloud mixture. And we're close to the end. There we go. And then I'm going to just tilt the cup back and I want to catch that drip right there. And we've done it. We've got a nice puddle. Uh, let's flip back and I'll show you the, the top view. And uh, it's looking good. So, and Gail's here. Hey, Gail. Uh, nice to see you. Gail Bernston is here, which is awesome. Um, thanks for joining us. And uh, all right, so it's looking good. You can let that sit for a, a second or two if you want. Admire it. Um, oftentimes the you know the puddle looks so much better than the you know the final painting, but we've got to stretch it out now. I really like uh, what's happening. We've got a lot of cool looking cells and things popping up around here. Uh, let's see. So let's uh, start with our tilting. I really like, before I do that, I really like this area. And unfortunately it's right along the edges, but maybe we can keep some of this cool stuff right in here. I think that's very interesting. So um, at this point you can kind of pick, pick areas you want to try to save it's not always possible like all this stuff around here is probably going to get tilted off i might try to save this section because it's so very interesting with the black and these interesting shapes kind of these feathery wispy shapes let's see what happens so i might uh, handle that last so i'm going to just expand uh, my puddle and probably go this way i don't want to like disturb that too much but uh, you never know, so let's just give it a shot. So I'm gonna just kind of slowly move the, the puddle around here, expand it. And you can take your time, there's no huge rush. And then here it's gonna get, uh, tricky for this area right here. It's going to get a little tricky. Maybe I'll try. I need to mix this up a little bit. I got some other color in there. I'll use a little flow extender right here. That'll help kind of move that black down a little. So I'm being kind of strategic at this stage. So right here, I'm just going to put a little of this uh, flow extender. And I know I just uh, spread a base coat over there, but this thicker uh, puddle of paint will kind of help carry this down. So I'll, have, I'll, be, I'll be a little, I'm just kind of giving myself a little insurance policy right there. So let's continue just kind of stretching our, Puddle around, and you can kind of see it's it's working, and uh, yeah, the black is kind of that extra puddle we poured is kind of helping pull that black over. So that's looking pretty good for now. I think I'm gonna um, well, since I'm over here, one way to ensure I keep this is um, to just pour off this corner right now. So I'm kind of doing the exact opposite of what I just said is coming to this last, but I'm changing my mind and I'm just gonna add some more paint here, like uh, down the sides and kind of covering this corner so that um, I don't have to pour off anything else. When I tilt and stretch, this will be kind of handled and uh, it will be fine. So I'll just kind of cover the sides right there. And I might have to pour off a little more from another corner, another side to kind of compensate having this extra amount of paint. So 
but that's okay. You can do that. So now I've got this kind of corner handled because I liked it. So now we can tilt off uh, our first corner. I think I'm going to go back down here to this one. So let's kind of pull that down slowly. And we'll go off this corner first. That looks pretty good. And I did take a little bit more off than I normally would just because of we're making these adjustments with that other corner. But I'm tilting back now into the painting. And uh, I'm liking that. And let's go up here next. So I'm just going to move that paint over there. Um, it's going, it's moving rather quickly because it's only the second corner. But there we go. Okay, and then tilt in back again. Well, so far so good. It's looking pretty interesting. I even like this, what's happening down here. That's a very interesting corner. I have to decide about that one. I'm just going to wipe my hands off a second. I think I see a little something in my paint. So I'm going to try to pull it out of there and grab my, uh, my little tweezers. So whenever you see something, it's best to kind of try to grab it as early as possible. Here we go. It's some kind of little part of uh, some dried paint, probably from my leftover paint, but we got it out. So let's see, what are we gonna do next? Um, let me turn this. Well, I like, See, I love this right here. We kind of talked about that a lot, but it's really beautiful. I think it's, uh, um, I'm definitely you know keeping that. I don't want to touch it. This one is nice, um, but I think I'm going to tilt that off um, just because this is so dramatic. I don't want it, I want to kind of um, make that more of a highlight. Plus I also need to pour a little more paint off um, it's hard. It's a tough decision, <laughs> but I think I'm going to go for it. Let me try it. And uh, I can hear and see all the no's and screaming as I do this. But here we go. And I'm definitely watching that uh, cloud puddle. I don't want to lose too much of that, if any. So I covered that corner. I'm going to tilt back again. And Just moving this down a little bit. So I am very happy with that. Um, we've got an interesting thing happening. I really like what's happening right here in this corner, but I wish my uh, center was a little larger. I'd kind of like to stretch that out a little bit more. So I think I'm going to tilt a little more off of this corner over here. Um, and just to, uh, try to enlarge this section a, a tiny bit. So let's give it a shot. I 
So here we go. Just I'm just watching everything or trying to. Um, my eyes are kind of darting around. And I'm almost done. We've got a lot of stuff happening right on that edge. So I definitely need to tilt kind of back. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I'm tilting back now, kind of back into the uh, into the center. And that created, we had a, a, a very uh, diagonal compositional feel, and it's even more exaggerated now, which I kind of like a lot. So now what I'm going to do, I want to just bring that kind of white cloud a little down into the, into the composition a little bit more. But again, I don't want to lose that black corner, so I've got to be careful. So I'm letting the whole thing kind of just come down towards the bottom a little more. That's looking pretty good. This was, uh, I'm almost done, I think. So there we go. I think... That's pretty interesting, I'd say. Um, I'm gonna wipe my hands off quick. But I quite like what we did, uh, pouring more off of this corner. You know, we've expanded our that white uh, center, the cloud center. And uh, I think that, that helped a lot and created a more kind of cohesive, um, composition. I really like this diagonal, like really strong diagonal movement we've got going on. I think that's very cool. I really like what's happening right here in that corner. And we kept the black, the interesting black corner up here. Now we got kind of stretched out. Uh, we have all those cool, like, kind of wispy lines. Those are gone, but I still quite like what's happening up there. And there's a lot of little subtle details that you, you can't see on the camera, but I can see here that are very cool. So I think that's a pretty fast one, but uh, I think we did it. And I quite like it. We do have a, a, a nice kind of cloudy feel. Um, happening with our cloud pour mix, um, that kind of wispy, kind of white, um, that's kind of, it looks like kind of it's, like it's airbrushed a little bit. I like that, how that looks a lot. So in our gold, um, remember this was more a neutralized gold because I added a little purple to the gold and that turns into kind of this beautiful bronze when it mixed with the black and uh, our and it also mixed with the, the blue we had. Um, so it's a very neutral kind of subtle painting, which I quite like a lot. So, all right. So I, I'm gonna flip back here and see, I'm gonna just uh, check the edges. They all look like they're covered. I think we got it. So let me flip back here and uh, let's see if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, thanks for all the nice comments, by the way. I really appreciate that. And uh, so let me flip back here quick. So yay, it turned out pretty nice. I'm happy with that one. Um, so like all of these paintings, you never quite know what the result's gonna be, that's half the fun. Um, but it's always nice when you get a little bit surprised. 
And so I kind of deviated from my norm, my normal way of tilting, and we dealt with that corner and that uh, um, we were able to save that and keep it, which is really cool. So um, just checking for any questions you might have. And CJ is asking, uh, what size canvas? This is a 14 by 18. And uh, it's one of my uh, cradled panels that I make. So it's um, but a 14 by 18. And it's about, you know, gallery profile. So like about an inch and a half thick. All right. So let's see here. So if you have any questions, um, I'll be happy to answer. And let's see, I'm just checking the comments in the back here. I'm looking at my screen, by the way. That's why I'm looking over here. Um, let's see if there's any questions that came in earlier. And let's see. I'm not seeing any, but maybe they're coming in now. Um, oh, Susan is asking, uh, you mentioned neutralizing the gold with purple. What effect does that have on the painting? Um, well, it's, you know, it's just a different color that we're adding. And uh, the reason I did that was because I had a lot of other kind of very neutralized colors. Uh, and, and the gold, just straight gold, could be a little bit, you know, garish, perhaps, with these other uh, kind of more subtle colors. That's why I like to kind of knock that one back a little bit. Um, but as you can see, it uh, the gold we have a beautiful effect in, with the gold. It's but it's it mixed with other colors, you know, like most paintings and no, most colors do. Um, but it had a, it, it turned into this you know beautiful kind of bronze color, which I wasn't really expecting, but I quite like. So, but that's a great question. And let's see here. Uh, let's see. And uh, Jay is asking me, the support you use under the painting, is it hard to remove? Uh, when do you remove it? Um, well, the support, there's, the only thing I have underneath uh, my painting is some little hooks. And those are kind of like little feet to keep my panel elevated. Um, but there is a detail that I, that it's, it's actually built into the panel. It's like this little recessed detail, um, but that's all part of the panel. So there's nothing I really have to remove. It's all like one piece. Um, so, but it's, it's something I came up with and that's why it's, you know, it might look weird because <laughs> I'm the only one that uses it, but hopefully it answers your question. Um, and uh, Karen is, is mentioning, she still loses her gold in her pores. And that can, that can, that's a very common problem. Um, and sometimes people uh, recommend the gold being thinner. Sometimes they recommend it being thicker. I like to kind of keep the gold the same consistency as my other paints. Um, I try using it earlier in your cup. Um, either first or second is usually where I put the gold in my cup, in my layered cup. Uh, and then more often you could try that um, and see, you know, see if you can really get that gold to, to, to come alive and show up. And uh, Diane is asking, um, uh, why purple? And I think you're mentioning why did I put purple in my gold paint? And uh, the reason is because gold is basically yellow and purple is the complement of yellow. So on the color wheel, uh, where's my, I think my color wheel is in the other room, but on the color wheel, we've got yellow at the top usually, and then purple is right straight down from, from yellow. So they're complementary colors. Um, Orange and blue are also complements. Red and green are complements. Anytime you add the complements together, they want to neutralize each other and turn into like a gray, uh, some sort sort of gray. And that's one of the big problems that people have in their paintings is coming, getting muddy colors. It's because their complement colors are mixing in their paintings. Um, but the key is you won't, don't want to mix them equally in like equal amounts. So I had I mixed up gold. And then I put just a little bit of purple in there. So just a tiny bit of purple. And that's what kind of neutralized the, the gold and made it more of a kind of a grayish gold, if you will. Um, but that's the reason I use purple. 
So if I was using copper, for instance, if I wanted like a, to neutralize the copper, copper is basically like a red orange or red. I would add maybe a, a touch of green to the copper and that would neutralize it, uh, make it more of a grayish uh, coppery color. Um, so that's, that's the trick with complements. But great question. And let's see. And uh, Sharon is, is uh, uh, asking, can I see her question? I can see this one, but I don't see the question. Um, if, if it's not too hard of a question, maybe throw it in again. I'll try to uh, go back and find it, though. Um, and let's see. And I'm going to see. Uh, Sharon, let me see if I can find your... Uh, oh, here, here it is. Uh, what is a cloud mixture? Well, a cloud mixture is uh, it's a it's a paint mixing formula used to make to get these kind of interesting cloudy effects, um, these kind of wispy white effects. The painting right behind me, this is also a cloud pour uh, painting using a, a similar mixture, a cloud pour mixture, and you can see it, it creates a lot of cells and interesting uh, cloudy textures. Um, let me flip back over here quickly. That's a good question. Um, so let me go back to the painting. So right in here, all of the, you can see kind of how we have the white like in the center here, but it's kind of diffused and kind of looking kind of like a, like if you took a airbrush and just put a subtle glaze of white over and it's kind of you know puffy a little bit, that's kind of what the cloud mixture will do. And it creates a lot of interesting cells over here. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's a highly sought after effect. Uh, there are many different uh, cloud mixture formulas uh, that people have. And, uh, but the key to a cloud mix is you have to use a certain type of paint called a satin enamel paint. Um, DecoArt makes a very popular one, DecoArt satin enamel. I, and then there's also another one you can buy at the Home Depot store. It's a house paint that's a satin enamel house paint. And that's what I used in this one. In this particular uh, formula, I have, uh, for this particular cloud mix, I have two parts Floetrol. I've got one part of the uh, bare satin enamel. That's the Home Depot house paint. And then one part of another type of white color. And I like to use... Um, even the craft smart white works well. Um, it's just a like a craft paint like this. So one part of a craft smart paint, or um, in this particular mix, I used uh, the artist loft uh, soft body paint. When I use this all the time, and uh, so that is my cloud mixture. And then of course a little bit of white, or I'm sorry, a little bit of water to get just the right uh, consistency with your paints. So that is what a cloud mix is. Uh, it's just a specific paint formula to get this kind of interesting, um, kind of uh, kind of wispy, puffy looking, uh, cloudy effect. Hopefully that made it sense. <laughs> so, and uh, someone is asking if I'm in America or Canada. I'm in America. I'm in California. So, but uh, I've got a lot of uh, Canadian friends. My best friend is actually lives in Canada. I love Canada. So, and then uh, Mimi also asked about the cloud mix. Hopefully you caught that, uh, Mimi, my formula, what it was. And um, was uh, two parts Floetrol, one part uh, satin enamel paint, and then one part of another type of white, either the Artist Loft or the uh, Craftsmart white is what I like to use. But pretty much any white will work. And then some, some water to get the right consistency. All right, so, oops, so good question. And let's see, let me flip back here and uh, just check in uh, other questions. And uh, someone's asking if, they could, if I could post the cloud recipe. Um, I believe I posted, I've got a lot of cloud pour videos on my YouTube channel, and I believe it's in the description of um, 
all of those videos if you want to check that out. If you just go to Bradcast and Acrylic Pouring on YouTube. Plus, you can check out all my videos. So, um, But the uh, formula is in there. That's probably the easiest way to find it. And, uh, and then you're also wondering why you can't see other comments. It's because you're on Facebook. A lot of people are watching from uh, YouTube. Um, I'm streaming in both locations. But you can only see uh, comments from the platform you're using. So that's the reason. And uh, Lily is uh, saying, did you say you added Liquitex pouring medium to cloud mix? Uh, no, not on this one. Um, there are, I use about three different cloud mixtures or cloud formulas. This is my easy formula. So it just uses three ingredients. It's the Floetrol, the, um, the satin enamel, and then another white, and then the water, which isn't really an ingredient. You always use water usually. Um, but in one of the other formulas, I do use a different type of pouring medium, but it's not the Liquitex. But you can find that in the membership, Lily. Sorry, Lily. <laughs> so, and you can print that out, all of the different uh, formulas. And uh, Sharon is asking, um, do you ever use, or do I use Australian Floetrol? Uh, I only use it when I'm doing like the bloom technique, um, but I normally always use like 90% of my paintings. I'm, I use the uh, American Floetrol, um, which is the flood Floetrol, which is this stuff right here. I use this for almost all my, my paintings, 90% uh, I'd say. Um, and I do have the Australian Floetrol, but I only use it for the bloom technique because um, it's really expensive to get in America. Um, so, um, but you know, for most of the paintings I like to do, you know, flood, the flood Floetrol works really, really great for me. And uh, Jay is asking, um, does the satin enamel paint always have to be white or can you use other colors? You can use other colors actually, Jay, that's a great question. Um, you can get the, well, it's a little more complex. So you have to use to get different colors. Um, you can get different colors in two ways. DecoArt makes satin enamel paints in the white is the most popular, but they also make uh, a range of colors and you could try those colors out. There's a blue and there's a gray and there's, I can't think of all of them, but they have a range of colors. So if you could, you could try those colors out and if uh, DecoArt makes one, it should work just fine with your uh, cloud mixture. The way I like to do it, I don't like, I don't use the DecoArt for making colored cloud mixtures. What I like to use is a different type of bare satin enamel paint and it's called the deep base. Uh, paint. So you buy that at Home Depot. Uh, and a deep base means uh, it dries relatively uh, translucent or transparent, but you can tint it with other colors and uh, you can get uh, colored cloud mixtures. And I don't have the can right next to me, but here is, I, pu I put the paint in these uh, squeeze bottles. So here's my bare deep base um, satin enamel paint, and uh, it looks white because it is white when it's uh, when it's fluid and liquid, but it dries uh, relatively translucent. And I've used this to make black cloud mixtures, red cloud mixtures, and the dried paint is you know holds the color very well. If you use the regular satin enamel, um, like here is the regular bare satin enamel. Like if I use this and try to make a red uh, cloud mixture, it would be pink because there's so much white in this particular uh, uh, satin enamel. This is the white, the ultra white satin enamel. It's great for light and white uh, cloud mixtures. This is the one you want for to make colored uh, cloud mixes. So you could do pretty much any color you wanted, really. Um, I've, I've done black, red, green. Um, oh gosh, I think purple. So, but this is the one you want, is the, the bare deep base uh, satin enamel. And you should be able to find that at pretty much any Home Depot. Uh, if you have a Home Depot by you, that is what you want. Great question. 
And uh, all right. And uh, Carla is asking, have I used the wood conditioner with uh, Floetrol as a cell activator? I've tried it. I don't really like it too much. Um, I've tried, I've messed around with the wood conditioner some. It's really stinky. Um, it kind of gives me a headache. I don't particularly care for that. I also don't like the uh, polycrylic for that reason. Um, a lot of people use the Minwax polycrylic as a, an additive in their paints to get specific uh, effects. The polycrylic really gives me a bad headache and I'm prone to get these awful migraines. So anything that gives me any kind of little twinge of a headache, um, I'm terrified of because my, my, my migraines are really terrible and horrible. Um, so I don't, I don't like to use those. I've also noticed it doesn't really, it didn't really give me a, uh, a lot of the effects I was hoping for, but um, there are some other things we can add to get different types of cell activators. And this is again, all bloom talk here. Uh, when we talk about cell activators, um, that's, that's bloom stuff, uh, specifically for a bloom technique or a bloom swipe, things like that. Um, but if you can try it out, if it works for you, um, go ahead and use it. Um, and you, you don't want a lot, you want just a few drops in your paints uh, when you're using, when you're trying out the wood conditioner. Good question. All right. Uh, and Sharon is asking, uh, do I gesso all my canvases before pouring and do I ever use resin? Um, well, when I use work on canvases, if they're pre-primed and most all of them are, then I don't gesso them. There's no need unless uh, you want to, try to um, eliminate or um, at least, uh, what's another word? Um, minimize, that's what I'm looking for. Minimize the canvas texture on your canvases, then gesso is a great thing to do. Uh, if you find it like a thicker gesso, um, that can work really well. Utrecht has a really creamy, thick gesso. Um, and if I wanted to eliminate the canvas texture, I'm not a huge fan of canvas texture on the paintings, that's one of the big reasons I work on panels a lot. Um, you, could, you can paint on a coat of gesso, uh, let it dry and then give it a sand, even two coats of gesso. And of course, um, make sure it's dry in between each coat and sand each coat with a very fine sandpaper. Um, and you'll, you'll hide or eliminate a lot of that canvas texture. But normally if you're just, uh, if it doesn't bother you, then um, you don't, there's no need to prime really. You can just pour right on top of the canvas. Good question. And oh, do I use resin? Yes, every now and then. Um, I don't, I don't like to use resin so much as a top coat, um, over my paintings. Um, because I'm not a huge fan of the super shiny, uh, or highly reflective, you know, top coat surfaces. I like more of a satin or semi-gloss finish. So I use a different product for my top coats. But, uh, but resin is, is fun. You can do a lot of cool things with resin. And I know a lot of people love to use it as a, as a top coat. So great questions. And uh, all right. So I'm not seeing any more at this moment. So while you're thinking up another question, um, I wanna to talk to you about something quickly and uh, just to get your, uh, just so you're aware of it. And uh, I have a uh, acrylic pouring membership called the Pouring Studio um, over at my website, Acrylic Pouring Academy. And uh, I'm going to be revamping a lot of how that membership works. And I just talked to my members about it uh, in our, during our last Q and A. So they're kind of up to speed on kind of what's coming. But I do have uh, quite a few people on the wait list for when I reopen the membership. And I don't open it all the time. It's not always open. I open it a few times a year. Um, but I'm going to be opening it one more time before I uh, kind of revamp how things work. Um, and so I wanted to give everyone a chance to join if they wanted to, to check it out. And it's gonna be opening the end of April. So I'm gonna be talking about it a lot from here until the time uh, the membership's open to join. And uh, 
it's going to be a, uh, if you're interested or have thought about it at all, this will be the time to join because I'm going to be making you a super awesome, amazing uh, deal. So um, before I kind of switch how a lot of things work in the membership. So uh, if you're at all interested in learning more about it, uh, I'm going to throw a link in the chat and uh, you could go and just sign up for the wait list and then I'll keep you updated on all the new developments and uh, when the membership's launching, what I'm changing, why I'm changing it, um, and all of the stuff you're going to be getting uh, when you join the membership. So, so if you're interested in it, um, go check it out and uh, I'll be talking a whole lot more about it in the coming weeks. So, and if you're a member and you're like, what's happening? Oh my gosh, uh, don't freak out. Uh, if you go watch the last uh, Q&A, if you watch the replay, it's in the membership. Uh, I talk all about this and what I have planned. It's all exciting stuff and it's all good things. Um, and I think you'll be very excited about it. So, um, but, uh, so there is the link right there. You can go to acrylicpouringacademy.com um, slash studio and you'll have the uh, sign up link for the wait list and i'll be talking a whole lot more about it um, in the coming uh, weeks all right so and susan's got a question and then so that's it for now uh, it's just a teaser but uh um but get excited about it it's going to be pretty awesome so susan has a question uh tell us about the painting behind you yellow black and gray this one right here was last week's uh, demo that we did. So this was a, um, it was like a really dark uh, forest green that we mixed up. And uh, that was the 24 karat gold is in there. And you notice this has a similar kind of cloudy effect. Uh, the 24 karat gold from DecoArt has a similar, you know, cloudy effect to it. So, but that's the one we did last week. and. Uh, uh, it dried really nicely. I kind of left it in this like orientation. I, I kind of like that, that kind of a uh, vertical format. So, um, but that's that one. So if you missed this one, you could go check out the replay of, of that painting. It's on uh, my YouTube channel and uh, see what we did there. That was a fun one. And, uh, and Jay is asking, how do I tell if I'm already on the wait list? Uh, if you get any emails from me at all, then uh, safe to say you're probably on the wait list. Um, if you don't get any emails from me, then um, you're probably not on the wait list. So um, you can go, uh, go check it out. You can always put your name in and email in again. It won't hurt anything. So uh, if you're at all worried about it. But good question, Jay. And thanks for all the great comments, everyone. So let's see. And Vet is here and she missed everything. <laughs> so, but not to fear, you can always check the uh, um, the replay. This one went pretty quick, actually, this, this painting. Let me f uh, show you the painting one more time. You can see what we did. Uh, it turned out nicely. I really like uh, the overall look of this painting a lot. Um, I really like that diagonal uh, this really cool diagonal composition we have, kind of this little jog right here, this little ziggy line. I like that a lot. Um, it's a fun one. And we got we got some negative space. And uh, I'm known for always pouring it, pouring off the negative space. I'm sure I made Monique happy with this one. So, all right. And uh, let's see here. Let me go back. <clears throat> um, and Carla is asking, how did the one turn out with the gold background? Um, which one was that? Uh, the gold background. Was that the green one? The green and gold background? I think that was the one. Um, I can't think of another gold one I did. That must have been it. Um, it turned out pretty good, actually. It dried nicely. I can't see it. It must be... I must, I don't remember where I put it. It's on, it's probably on my drying rack somewhere, but uh, it did dry nicely. So, and I like working on that gold background, like a, like a gold base coat. It's, it's a cool one. So 
Cool. I'll, I'll try to share that with you, Carla. Um, okay. Let's see. I'm just checking to see if there's any more questions. And uh, I don't see any at the moment. So if you have any last minute burning questions, uh, ask them now. And uh, try to answer them. And if not, um, then why don't you give um, give a cloud pour a try this weekend if you have the stuff? So uh, and you could you can always go get the bare set enamel if Home Depot is close to you. One quart is usually what I get, and it lasts quite a while. It's about twelve dollars, I think, fifteen dollars for a quart, um, but it'll last you quite a long time for cloud pours. And give one a try and see what you think. Um, and uh, there are a lot of really complicated recipes out there for cloud pours, really comp complex formulas with like four or five different ingredients. Um, but this one's really simple, just three. And they're all pretty easy to find, all pretty affordable, and it worked pretty well. So, all right. So I don't see any questions coming up. So with that, I will say thanks so much for joining me for this one. This turned out nicely. I'm really, uh, um, really happy with it. And um, hopefully you have a great weekend. And uh, let's see. Oh, and uh, Susan just saying have a great weekend. You have a great weekend too, Susan. So I have a lot to do this weekend. Um, so but do some painting. Uh, hopefully you can try out a cloud pour if it interests you. I'd love to see it. You can share it in the uh, uh, Acrylic Pouring Club Facebook group if you want to. And uh, I'll talk to you again really soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.